What's up guys, my name is Khan, and we're back today in Scrap Mechanic and we're back with more of the number logic from the mod pack. In the last episode, we looked at remote controls and how to do some remote control setups with the number pack logic and I made that little RC cube and it's really, really easy to do here. You can see we've got a seat hooked up and on this one side here, we've got a bunch of conditions which check when we press W, S, A, and D and of course this one button. They convert it then to a binary signal which then goes through the remote control block and comes out the other side and if we want to do steering with this method, we use two controllers and a double bearing steering mechanism. So you can see as we turn left and right, you can see that that steering block will go to the one side and then we'll go to the other. But in that last episode, I did mention there is a way to actually do it with angular measurements and do it with a single electric motor. So you can see here, we actually have a single electric motor hooked into a single bearing, which we could use for steering through the remote control block. And all we've got here is the seat directly hooked into the remote control block, which then comes out goes to an AD converter, which then converts it from the remote control signal to an AD, which then of course goes straight into that electric engine. And you can see here, this actually works really, really well. And you can see as we turn left, it'll rotate to the left. And as we turn right, it rotates to the right. But obviously this does not mirror proper steering. We don't get that sort of centering back to zero point. We don't really have that option going on with a single bearing. And as well, it doesn't really have a maximum angle. So as we turn, if we hold the steering in the one direction, it'll just keep turning in that one direction. And obviously we could, you know, we could put a block down or something to, to limit the maximum angle to something like this, for example. I'd rather do it completely digitally controlling this electric motor as, as we'll call it, we'll call it digital. So I decided to work and make a circuit that actually can do just that. So this entire steering mechanism is actually just a setup to make this one electric engine control this one bearing and rotate this black piece. But you can see if we get it here, we press A and D, it'll turn in the one direction, but you can see it actually stops at a certain point. It doesn't keep going past that point and we can, uh, we can let go of it. It'll go back to middle. We can turn back in the other direction you can see. And again, it won't go past that point. And so you can see it's actually a really, really cool device. It lets us sort of steer a vehicle, have it go back to a zeroing point. And then on top of that, we can actually increase the maximum angle. So right now the maximum angle is set to 20 degrees. We can actually increase that to let's go up to let's say 45 degrees. And just like the steering bearings in Scrap Mechanic, we can actually see now we can go all the way up to 45 degrees there and we can release it and it'll go back to zero and we can go all the way in the other direction to negative 45 degrees. Really simply, all we're doing is comparing the measurement of the compass on this exometer to the measurement of the compass on this exometer. When I first showed the mod pack logic, I did take a look at the exometer and you can see we've got a bunch of different functions here. So speed is the the speed at which this exometer is moving. Uh, meter is actually not meter. I know a lot of people gave me a hard time of this. So I actually asked Brent Batch what this was for. And I believe he said it's just a visual representation of a number. So it goes between zero and one, I believe. And you can basically feel your number blocks into the meter and it'll you know show the the measurement so it's just sort of that visual measurement and then we've got rotation which appears to me to be angular velocity not angular position so as you put it on a block it basically measures how fast this thing is spinning uh, you could put it on your wheels for example if you want to measure how fast your wheels were spinning uh, we've got velocity which is speed in a direction so speed in the direction this is facing of course we've got the compass which is actually how we do this and that just outputs relative to uh, north i guess it would be which that direction whatever that is and then we've got position y position x and then of course the altitude and acceleration and then we're back at speed so using the exo meter we can actually compare the angle of this compass to the angle of this compass and by comparing those two angles we can actually determine what angle this piece is at here this compass's angle will never change relative to the vehicle and this compass angle mounted on top of the steering will actually rotate relative to the vehicle so as long as the two of them are lined up we can actually do whatever we want which is really really kind of cool and so how this works is this compass feeds into this white block this one feeds into this black block which is just for you know the comparisons you can see white minus black here and then of course we've got the two angles just being output here now you don't really need these number displays this is really just for a visual but you can see here this compass is at zero degrees so we're facing straight to north if we actually were to take this whole thing and rotate it like this you'll see that uh, this one's now at 90 degrees and the other one is at 90 degrees and then as we rotate left and right you can see the measurements on that top one changing so now we're 91.76 and you can see we're going back 91.9 
we can rotate in this direction 120 degrees and so on and those angles will always be relatively consistent and then of course all we're doing is taking these two angles and subtracting the one from the other to calculate the difference between these two angles which is stored in this black number block here which output is negative 1.67 degrees so it's just subtracting the top one minus the bottom one and that gives us our angle here now because of the way electric motors work we can't actually have this go straight back to zero you can see we can actually lower the tolerance so let's lower this to one a negative one and you can see now it's going to try and move back and forth but because the motor is moving even at the slowest speed um it'll it, it'll never really get back to perfect zero you can see it's always sort of going a little bit too far and a little bit back so that's why we have this tolerance sort of set here so we change this one to two degrees and negative two degrees and now basically the electric motor will stop when it's within two or negative two but i find three and negative three actually works the best and that way when you let go of it it stops when it sees negative three so there's a little bit of excess we can also do four negative four and so on and so forth so you can really play around with this and of course if we add weight to this motor it'll spin a little bit slower which would make it better this is of course a very very light system because it's only you know a, a couple of blocks on the motor so again, having this ability to adjust that tolerance basically changes this angle, but you never want it at zero. You can see if we're at zero tolerance, it'll literally never hit zero because there's, you know, there's decimal points and all that. So you at least want one degree and negative one degree. That way there's a little bit of a tolerance in there so that it doesn't have to be at exactly zero. Of course, this still doesn't have enough weight. So uh, we'll just increase that tolerance even more. We'll go negative four and positive four. And there we go. Perfect. So this circuit, quite simply, when this angle is outside of this measurement, is always trying to move it back in the opposite direction to get it back to that measurement. Now, an electric motor is kind of a cool thing because you can feed it a number. And if you feed it a number that's one, it'll go in the one direction. And if you feed it the negative one, it'll go in the opposite direction, which is kind of cool. And that allows us to do a lot of different things. So really, all we're doing is we're comparing this resulting angle between the two compasses to these two tolerances here and that's what these two comparison blocks do and if it's outside the tolerance it'll actually take these tolerances and multiply them by basically one so it's one times the tolerance and that'll give us this output here or in the other case it'll multiply it by negative one so you can see here if our angle is greater than four degrees which is this left one, then it multiplies it by negative one to rotate it back in the one direction. And you can see here our angle 2.01, if it's less than negative four degrees, then it'll actually take an output one to the motor to put it in the other direction. And so it's a really, really simple system where basically as long as our motor is out inside these tolerances, there's no comparison. But if it's outside these tolerances, then we have to actually move it in the opposite direction. And then of course, you're going to say, well, what about when you're giving it a steering input? Will it override your steering input? Really simply, we've got a check here that checks to make sure if you're steering, so your steering is not equal to zero. You can see here, this is really a comparison that says, check if the steering is equal to zero, which means there's no input being fed from the player. But when this player is turning left or right, it's either a negative one value or a positive one value. And that disables this equals block. So when this steering is active, the auto correction won't actually try and do anything. So it won't fight you. It won't prevent you from going to one position or the other. And it'll just allow you to move between whatever angles you want. But when you let off the steering, then it actually tries to rectify itself with this angle. So a really, really cool system. I know it's a little bit complicated. I hope I explained that well enough. But basically, you know, check the angle within the tolerance as long as the player is not actually touching any controls. And then finally, we've got this extra little setup down here at the bottom, which really simply compares the angle difference to the maximum angle you've specified here and it overrides the player controls so in the same way the player controls overrides the auto correction controls this is the master control which says you know what i don't care if the player is doing it or the auto correction is doing it if you are above 70 degrees or whatever tolerance you want to set 65 you know we can go down to 45 again but if we are outside of this one angle here no matter what you are going to override it in the opposite direction. So if we go too far in the one direction to 45, even though I'm still holding the A control on the seat there, you can see it says, I don't care. I'm the absolute master. I override all the controls and I make sure that the steering doesn't steer any more than that in that direction. And then we just have to wait for a little bit for it to go back to zero. And then of course there we can turn it in the other direction. So this system is a really, really cool system and it gives us the exact same functionality as taking the seat here and hooking it up into this bearing just like that. Uh, the only difference is, of course, one, we can control the total angle this is at, we can control the speed with the electric engine, and we can, of course, control the zeroing tolerance. So really a lot of cool stuff you can do with the system. Now, of course, if the Axolot devs gave us the ability to just change the angle by interacting with the seat, 
uh, then, you know, this whole system would be obsolete. For all you guys who want to be able to do steering with a custom steering angle, I will upload the much more compact version of it right here to the workshop so you guys can take this, mount it to your vehicle, and have a completely custom steering angle as long as you, you know, put a compass onto this. So I think what we'll do is we'll take this and we'll disconnect it and hook it up to a vehicle. When I upload it to the workshop, it will be this entire module just so you can see how it is connected, but I tried to make the circuit as easy as possible with as few connections as possible. So in fact, this stuff we can all delete. It's just for visuals. It allows you to, you know, change that tolerance angle. So three degrees replaces the negative four and positive four. Rather than having to set both of them, I made it so you just have to set the one. And that's just a three degree tolerance on the zeroing position, four degree tolerance, whatever. And then this 30 represents the maximum angle you can go to. So 30 degrees in either direction. And then of course, all we're doing with this circuit is comparing the position of this compass, which is hooked into that white number block to this compass, which is hooked into that black number block. The black number block being the stationary compass and the white number block being whichever one is mounted to your moving steering position. And finally, we just hook our electric motor coming out of the blue and our seat just hooks into the red seat icon. So we can really do whatever we want with this setup. We can put it through an RC block, no problem. We can actually mount this to an RC vehicle. And instead of having the seat go to that, we have the RC block go to that. It's not a problem. All right, so you can see here, we've got a really basic car frame. And if we turn up the engine, we can actually, you know, move around. We've got the steering just hooked up straight, but rather than hook up a measurement system to both of these steering columns. I actually want to do something a little bit different and I want to make this a really simple push rod steering mechanism. So we're actually just going to put a couple of little sort of extension blocks here and just extend these two steering mechanisms out, put them up onto a bearing and then have this bearing go across to the middle section where we'll have just sort of a single push rod control both mechanisms. And I think that'll be like a really cool steering mechanism Plus, it'll allow us to just measure the angle at one point rather than at two different points. You could, of course, just have either one circuit off one wheel that measures the steering angle for both. Obviously, that might come into some problems if one of the electric motors gets a little bit jammed. So really, you'd want to have two circuits, one for each side of the wheel if you want to do them individually. Or, of course, we could just do this really simple push bar mechanism. So I think it's a really cool way to do sort of more advanced electronic controlled steering, but uh, it's definitely, definitely cool. So... We'll just take this really simply and all we got to do is just put this down to a bearing like so weld that to that and then of course we'll have this rotate come forward and uh we'll actually mount this to a concrete block just so we can put our meter directly on top of this just like that and we'll put a bearing here right a little bit uh, a little bit far forward but that's okay and then we'll put this like this and there we go that can be our lovely steering block mechanism and we will put our meter on this all right so we've got the gas engine hooked back up again we'll turn up the power on that and then of course we need an electric engine for our steering so we'll hook that in to our steering column at the front there we need a really simple xo meter just like this and we'll have that facing forward set it to compass which i believe is this one here there we go perfect and then we'll take our super awesome circuit and we'll just break this off the tutorial stand just like that. And uh, we will then weld this to our car. All right, so we can just perfect weld that. Now, you'll see that I've left this kind of hanging off the edge. That's fine. We'll actually delete these before we're done and we can get rid of them. So really simply, we got to take the compass that's mounted up top here, hook it into the white like so. Our electric engine gets hooked out from the blue here. This little blue sort of number block on the side hooks into our electric engine. And then, of course, our seat really simply hooks into our steering column there. And we're got, right now we have a tolerance of plus or minus three degrees and a 30 degree total. So let's just try it. And uh, are we mounted to a lift? No, we're not. Do we have power? Of course not. There we go. So if we go left, you can see we turn left and it actually stops. And if we release, uh, we've got it set in the wrong direction. That's fine. We just need to rotate that. There we go. You'll be able to tell if the bearing's in the wrong direction really simply because when you let go of the control, it won't go back to zero. So I just had to widen a little bit of extra space in here. It was actually having some issues for some reason turning in the one direction, but not the other. So you can see here, now we've got it turning there to that 45 degree. And you'll notice what's actually happening is it's turning a little bit past the angle and then it's being brought back a little bit. But then of course, you know, it, it adjusts itself. So a lot of you are probably asking, well, Khan, why is this actually a useful steering mechanism to have? And why would you want to have this advanced steering? And really simply, I'd say, you know, if you want to make something, for example, that could have an adjustable steering range, that's one possibility. The other possibility, of course, would be if you want to make something that could have like really tight steering like this and then, uh, you know, make like a truck or a city bus or something. 
rather than using the car steering. Of course, you can do all this with, uh, you know, a double bearing setup, but this is just really, really cool, you can see, and uh, we can actually adjust that. So right now, we're going between 30 and negative 30 degree angle on this front compass, comparing this compass, of course, to this compass, and we can easily change that so we can drop that even more. Let's go to, let's say, 15 degrees, and that means this bar here can't be more than 15 degrees in either direction, and so you can see if we hold left, it actually goes much, much less. Not really meant for, you know, fast cars necessarily, but definitely if you want to make some slow moving trucks that have crazy steering angles like 60 degrees or something, you can do all that with number logic. And of course, if you want to make an RC car, and a lot of you guys are going to say, well, Con, what about the response time? It's actually pretty much instantaneous. Like, I don't really notice very much lag at all in terms of when you turn, when you press the button versus when it actually turns. So it's a really, really interesting system and really just sort of an introduction for you guys who were thinking about number logic and what you could possibly do with it. I know a lot of you are going to say, well, what's really the point of all this? And uh, the answer is there's probably really none. I mean, it's kind of cool. And like I said, you could use it for some slow moving vehicles. Uh, rock crawlers, for example, would be uh, would be kind of cool. Stuff that, you know, you really want to have a very customizable angle on. You can do that easily. And of course, we could change this while we're moving. So we could easily wire up those buttons in and uh, just have this whole thing as one flexible system. So let's just wire these in as two and three. And uh, you can see we can actually, let's just drop it even more as we're driving. So let's go to like five degrees. And you can see now we've got a very, very shallow steering angle. And uh, we got to wait for that to come back to the middle here. There we, yeah, perfect. Perfect. So we can actually go to all sorts of different angles. We can increase that like crazy. Let's go up to, I don't know, like let's say 45 degrees. Hopefully not jam the mechanism here. But let's go way up to 45 degrees. And now you can see we've got an absolutely crazy, you know, let's go even higher. Let's go 60 degrees. And look at that. We're just adjusting it on the fly. And we're basically just increasing the maximum angle that our steering is allowed to go at. So we're all the way up at 75 degrees now. And, you know, that really could make a nice, tight, turning truck. So we could do all sorts of crazy stuff with this. And I, of course, will upload that little 5x5 five five section of the workshop. I'm sure you guys will be able to figure out how to make it work. Uh, I tried to make it as simple as possible. And I, of course, will upload it with the seat that it's attached to there. Just so you guys can really see it. But you can see it's really, really cool being able to do sort of custom steering angles. And uh, definitely for, you know, slow-moving vehicles, trucks, that sort of thing. It would be really, really awesome. Plus... This kind of works really well into making automatic controlled vehicles, stuff that's controlled by an AI system or something with an autopilot. It's a lot easier when you can control stuff by measuring angles and uh, adjust it, as well as, you know, if we're looking at doing a GPS controlled vehicle, we'll definitely need to be able to compare the angle at the direction we want to go to versus the direction that we're facing now and do all sorts of math. And uh, yeah, it's, it's going to be a lot of fun, guys. There's a lot of cool stuff we can do with these logic blocks and with these number blocks. And so I encourage you guys, check out this little module on the workshop. Let me know, of course, what you think of these builds in the comments down below. Let me know, of course, if there's other things that you want me to try to attempt with the number logic. I'm kind of working into more and more complicated objects with the number logic. I definitely want to do some big builds that have a lot of different things going on in them. Like, for example, auto steering mixed in with GPS, mixed in with, you know, guidance systems and all that kind of thing. But I want to just work into that and just sort of look at different small things we can do initially just to sort of do some cool stuff. Obviously, this is a pretty cool build to show that we can actually control steering simply with digital sort of inputs and controlling numbers, which is really, really awesome. But of course, the main point of this is really the fact that we can measure the angle between two different objects. And by being able to measure that angle, we can actually do so many different things, which is really, really, really cool. So I encourage you guys, let me know what you think in the comments down below. And while you're at it, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. And as always, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And we'll see y'all next time.